Good evening. The opening song is Crown Him with Many Crowns. Please stand. Crown him with many crowns, the lamb upon his throne. All kingdoms of the earth resound in praise of him alone. Awake, my soul, and sing of him who died for thee. And hail him as thy risen king for all eternity. Crown him the Lord of life, who triumphed o'er the grave, who on the third day did arise, and hope to sinners save. His glory now we see, who died and rose on In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Today we celebrate the feast, the solemnity of Christ the King. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd leading us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. 
Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the, pro the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep as a shepherd tends his flock when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so I will tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered. When it was cloudy and dark, I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out, the strayed I will bring back, the injured I will bind up, the sick I will heal, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another between rams and goats. The word of the Lord. The Response is, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life. But each one in proper order, Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ, then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, 
when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne, and all the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the gods. He will place the sheep on his right and the gods on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me, gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me. In, in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accused, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did, to do, to, what you di what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And this will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Messiah is the King of Kings. Messiah, Messiah is the Lord of Lords. Messiah, this is a um, praise and worship group um, that they always started their meeting with this song. Messiah is the King of Kings. Messiah, Messiah is the Lord of Lords. Messiah. Messiah is the King of Kings. Messiah, Messiah is the Lord of. And they will continue and continue and continue and continue and praise and continue and con And the more they repeat it, the more it sinks in. The more they repeat it in different intonations, depending on the group. When there are so many, they start different stanzas, different groups, and they just repeat it again and again. Messiah is the King of Kings. Messiah, Messiah is the Lord of Lords. The church gives us this great feast to remind us that we only have one king who is the king of kings and the lord of lords. The other earthly kings, they are just a shadow of the king and the lord that we have. There's this uh, church, there's one of the churches in Vienna in the crypt there have been buried around 150 different kings and queens 
And normally, on top of the graveyard, they'll carve a cross and they'll put a crown. So one of the, one of the graves, there's a cross carving, but then there's a, a skull and on top of it, a crown. What, re, what reminds those who pay pilgrimage to that church is that the last enemy for the kings of this world is death. So the person at the, very, at the very end, what brings the kings of this world to their knees is when they face death. The last enemy actually is death. It does away with their prestige, the wealth, and all the power. They are helpless when it, they face death. The only person who remains standing is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Now, in the early 20th century, I'm talking of 1920-something, there was a rise of many dictators. I'm talking of uh, Mussolini, Stalin, Hitler, all these dictators. And they wanted to amass a lot of power to gather a lot of armies and weapons and to conquer and have all these powers around themselves. And the church seeing all this struggle for superpowers and these powerful individuals, the church started this feast, reminding the faithful that you should not be distracted by all these individuals and all these movements and these, all these political leaders and these kings, the earthly kings. You should be focused on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. When we, talk, when we look at the scriptures, like in the Old Testament, the book of First and Second Samuel, when you look in the, the book of the prophet Micah, prophet Ezekiel, prophet Jeremiah, they present God as the king. You remember people begging, the children of Israel begging Samuel, that they may also have a king so that they, when they wage a war in other tribes, they'll have somebody leading them. But we realize that these earthly kings, they were not faithful. Most of the times, they did not use their power to serve the people. They did not realize that God was the one who had given them those powers. And we find that there's infidelity. What we are hearing in the first reading, God is reminding the children of Israel that actually I myself will be in charge. I myself will shepherd my people. I myself will guide them and feed them the king of kings. The same narrative we see in the New Testament. I think of the time of Annunciation when the angel Gabriel goes to Mary. He reminds Mary that the one who is to be born will be a king like his ancestor David and his kingdom will have no end. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom. And at the time when Mary and Joseph, there was this uh, Caesar Augustus, and Caesar Augustus was very powerful. He conquered a big territory. He built a lot, a lot, a lot of roads. There was a lot of peace. There was a lot of prosperity. There was a lot of uh, artwork and a lot of uh, yearning for education. 
And uh, when the three magi go, they, they, they try to go and visit Jesus when he's born. They say, where is this newborn king? We've heard, we've seen his star from the far east. And when they present gifts to Jesus, they give him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The gold because they recognize that he is a king. Frankincense because he's a priest. And then the ma, the ointment, the embalming oil is the type of death that he will die. There's no word in the scriptures that is repeated most often than the kingdom of God. Jesus again and again, again and again, he talks about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. The kingdom of God. He keeps talking about it. The kingdom of God. And when we talk about the kingdom of God, first of all is the life of grace. The life of grace that we receive at time of our baptism, and that is deeply in our hearts. The kingdom of God, therefore, is in each and every one of us, especially we who have confessed and accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. The kingdom of God, too, is revealed and manifested in the church. And when I talk about the church, I mean the pilgrim church. We who are on the journey, we proclaim in a very special way that we don't follow a particular politician. We don't belong to a particular national party. We don't belong to a particular territory or region. But we belong to the kingdom of God that is universal, and we only have one leader, the Christ, the King. The last aspect of the kingdom of God is that we are not limited on this particular world. Now, at this time and now, this is not the end. We talk about the eternal life, the life to come. That's why we say, Although the earthly kings, death is their last enemy, but for our King of kings and our Lord of lords, the Christ, he conquers even death itself. That's why we, who are followers of Christ, we are not even scared when we talk about death because we know that it is not it doesn't have power over us. We look forward in hope for eternal life. The readings revolve around judgment. And when they talk about judgment, the readings are deeply rooted into Christian charity. That based on Christian charity and how we relate with one another, that's how we will, we will be judged. Hunger, food, thirst, drink, naked, homeless, imprisoned. There's a beauty of belonging to the church. Because when you belong to the church, you practice your faith, then the church always reminds us of these fundamental issues that the gospel keeps reminding and inviting us to. Even if you forget when you come to church, you are reminded that. Christian charity, even if you, like you struggle doing these things, do them anyway for the sake of your love for Christ. Christian charity. In the kingdom of God, the law is the Beatitudes. You remember Matthew chapter 5? That's the new law. Blessed 
are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Those who long and know that what is most important for me and what comes first in my life is seeking this kingdom of God, that hunger and thirst for wanting to do the will of God. And that is what righteousness is all about. When we talk about being righteous, we hear Joseph, the husband of Mary, was a righteous man. He, he always discerned the will of God and did it. He always longed to be in this kingdom of God. Each Christian is invited to long to want to be in this kingdom of God. There's a lot of noise. There are a lot of kings that are not for sure kings that distract us. We should not be swayed by them. We should put our focus on the king of kings and the lord of lords. Then our hearts will be full of joy and happiness and contentment. Then we'll be freed from unnecessary anxiety, unnecessary depression, unnecessary fear, unnecessary wars, unnecessary enmity. If you focus on Christ, then you have this tranquility and peace. Then you will not fight the church because you know that within the church we proclaim and we manifest this kingship of Christ. Then you will love your church. Then you will want to participate in it. Then you will be glad that it is even there, it exists. Then you realize that it's a gift, special gift that has been given to you by the king himself and the Lord himself. Let us pray in this mass that we may be charitable in our words and in our deeds. It is a scandal. It is a scandal for a Christian who professes Christ as the king of kings and the Lord of lords not to practice charity, Christian charity, not to give food to that who is hungry, not to give drink to the one who is thirsty, not to welcome somebody who is homeless, is a scandal, a big one. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified and appointed as Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As members of God's kingdom, let us together offer our petitions to our Heavenly Father.
For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, may God continue to bless him in shepherding the faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the poor, the hungry, the stranger, and the prisoner, may they be filled with the knowledge of God's love for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us in this faith community, may Jesus the Good Shepherd lead us home when we go astray. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Cade Tyler Cox, who is being baptized here at Resurrection this weekend, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they soon rejoice in the eternal kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Agnes Teakin, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's include our own intentions inside. Lord God, on this day when we celebrate your almighty kingship, we offer our prayers and ask that you answer them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice that you have made for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the love of the Holy Church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption, and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, 
And with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we are brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, 
through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word and my soul shall be healed.
forgiven because you are forsaken and accepted. You are condemned. And I'm alive and well. The Spirit is within me because you died and rose again. I'm forgiven because you are forsaken. Let us pray. <coughs> Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O oh Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, 
we may live with him eternally in, he in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. This week on Thursday will be Thanksgiving. Apart from having turkey at home and uh, gravy, and what else do you eat, you guys eat? Yeah, dressing and uh, yeah, there will be mass here in the morning. Normally, we don't have mass on Thursdays, but we'll be having mass on. Th we'll have mass this week on Thursday. There's no better way of thanking God than starting your day with mass. What else did I want to say? The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thank Thanks you, be God. To God. To Jesus Christ.